Smack down, love poem, and oh yes, let us not forget the tuba player. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Nothing <laughs> says love like a tuba, <laughs> I think. Are your ears still ringing? Huh? <laughs> yes, they're ringing like cathedral bells. Aww. But it's worth it if it made you happy. <laughs> you are happy, aren't you? What? I'm still tingling. I'm so happy. Really? <clears throat> so, uh, since you're happy, <laughs> I was just wondering why were you up all night pacing around like 50 times? You were. I just hope, you know, it's not a case of where I could get you 50 tubas and, you know, your mind would still be on David. My being up had nothing to do with David. I was worried about Trevor coming down with something. Mm, well, I checked him before we went to sleep and he was fine. He didn't have a fever. He was fine. Well, I'm a nervous mom, okay? Mm, okay. That's why I just sensed something was was wrong, so I just kept getting up during the night to check on him. Well, why didn't you wake me up? Well, because you have to work today, and there's no sense in both of us having to be up all night. Let me explain you something, okay? <laughs> it is a biological fact that doctors need less sleep than other human beings. In med school, I got like two hours of sleep a night, so the next time that you have that, I think the baby might have some sort of sickness blues or some sort of garden variety insomnia, you call me, wake me, nudge me, okay? <laughs> I'm your man. How is it you always know how to make me feel better? <laughs> the other thing is being married to a doctor. I always have the right medicine. Ooh, can be a doctor. You are such a big boy. Oh, well, thanks. You know, I'm lifting him so much I haven't had to go to the... Oh, him, Look Jeff. Him here. He is a big boy, huh? Come to Mommy. I can't believe how fast you're growing up. Isn't he, though? I know. Next, he'll be asking for the car keys. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take a lot of... Where's my... Yeah, a lot of these. I want to get early Trevor. Come on, right there. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to need batteries Yay. for this thing. Anyway. Okay. Hey, uh, I got to split. Hey, don't be growing any facial hair when I'm gone, okay? <laughs> Bye, baby. Bye, babe. Love you. Me too. Yes. Well, you better get used to getting your picture taken there, big guy, because your daddy Jake is going to be documenting every microscopic event. Yes. <laughs> it's just too bad that pictures... Won't be able to fill in the moments that David's going to miss out on. I just called you to let you know that he woke up with a new tooth this morning. A new tooth? And you called to tell me. I really wish I was there to see it. David, I know that this is really hard for you to be away from Trevor. Especially now that you... I not say it. I'm dying. You can't think that way. You need to focus on your treatment in Malaysia. Focus on an image of yourself alive, that way that you can spend more time with Trevor. David, uh, I have to go. Something's come up. I'm not out the door two feet, and you're sneaking a phone call to David. I wasn't sneaking. No? Were you just calling him to check on him? 
Didn't you talk to him last night? Or are you going to stick with the story that that wasn't him calling, that was the babysitter calling? No, it was David who called last night. He was checking on Trevor. Hmm. He's a worried father. Right. That's normal. Last night was supposed to be about you and me, focusing on our relationship. I knew if I told you who it was, you would get mad. Right. But now I am mad because you weren't honest about it. And if I hadn't come back to get my phone, you wouldn't have told me about this phone call either, right? Why would I? Why? <laughs> because we're a couple, we're married, we're a team, supposed to share these types of things. I don't know. Okay. So I open up, then what, Jake? Then then you you tell me that you're mad at me for having compassion for him? Because you still think that this illness is all part of some huge plot to come between us. That's right, I do. You know, I know that you don't have any faith in David, but I just wish that you would have a little in me. Who says I don't have faith in you? I have faith in you. Then why would I ever fall for David? Jake, I love you, and I want to be with you. Why can't you believe that? I do, I do believe that. But you don't trust it. You still think that David's going to suck me into falling in love with him. Why can't you just let this go? You know, half the time I watch you drift away, <laughs> and the other half of the time I see you trying to pull David into this house, into this home. And if you can just see that, I mean, if you could just be honest with your, yourself about that, at least. You want honesty? Here it is. It doesn't matter if David is dying or not. Nothing could change the way I feel about you. What we have is love, deep, committed love. And what I have for David is pity, compassion. I feel bad that he's not going to get to watch his own son grow up. And thankfully, Trevor will have you in his life to feel that spot. I love that little boy. I love him like he's my own. I know you do. It's been almost four years since I lost my father. And I'm still dealing with it. I don't think I'll ever get past it. You know, one day when Trevor is older, he's going to ask me questions about David. And not because you are not the most wonderful father, just because he's part of him. And when he asks those questions, I need to be able to hold my head up and say that I was nice to him. I was kind to him, even if he didn't deserve it. And I did not leave him to die alone the way that my mother did to my father. I hated her for that. And I do not want Trevor to hate me. Look, I, I know that I cannot change your opinion of David. But I can at least put your mind at ease. I could never, ever love him, Jake. It would be impossible because I already gave my heart to you. Can't you feel that? <laughs>